Now, if you choose any of the four clubs featured in today's video, the one thing I can guarantee you is you won't be disappointed. You see, in the last few months, one of the most popular clubs reviewed on my channel and also in the comments section below from golfers is the success of the modern day seven wood. These things are incredible. They are for me a no brainer for pretty much most average golfers. And today we're gonna to look at four of the very best. I've got dry ball data. I've got plenty of uh, balls hit here on the course at Hollywell Golf Club. And I'll tell you what separates these four, if anything at all. Let's kick things off with some positivity. One of the biggest benefits of these golf clubs is just how high they launch the golf ball. But that is also a possible negative comment at the same time. How good is that, by the way? You see that ball flight, in my opinion, is one of the main reasons that make these so appealing to the masses. And for most average golfers with average swing speeds, the assistance that all of these clubs give in terms of launching that ball is a huge, huge positive. But I also should point out, it's a possible negative for some golfers who perhaps play in windy conditions, links courses, they might pop the ball up just a little bit too high. So bear that in mind. Now, another huge positive about seven woods is they are incredibly flexible in your bag and can be played in a number of different positions. Starting off from the rough where it should be an easy club to use to pick it up out of what is a fluffy lie here and just fire that ball so, so high, picks it up easy. What would I rather be playing out of here? A lofted iron equivalent or a seven wood? Well, that's a no brainer, but the flexibility, it doesn't end there. You can also use them as a rescue club when you're stuck amongst the trees. another few hundred yards down the fairway end. You can also use them for a little dink around the green. And one thing that the eagle eye amongst you will have noticed that I played each of those shots with four different seven woods. They are the four different seven woods that are gonna feature in today's video. Each very much have their own merits. What I want to know is what are their differences? So let's take a closer look at those four seven woods in question. Now, before we go any further, I just want you to know I have hit a huge amount of shots on the course with each of these seven woods, and I've also hit a number of shots in terms of dry ball data. So I've got some extensive feedback in terms of performance, but before we get there, I said, let's take a look at it because when we get to the dry ball data and perhaps my opinion on course in terms of performance, what you're gonna realize is that there's not huge amounts separating these in terms of performance though there are some, but when it gets down to looks, these are very, very different. And I think they're gonna play a major part in your decision-making process. So let's start off by having a look at them. You've got that Ping G430, which is a real shallow club head, matte finish, looks superb at address in my opinion. A lot of visible loft on the club, which is always good in terms of confidence inspiring and all round just a superb finish in my opinion on the G430 line in general this year. Then let's have a look at Paradigm. Again, a very shallow club at a dress. Very different in terms of that crown. Uh, we've got that gray line at the front and then we've got a uh, high gloss blue finish at the back. Is it my favorite look? Probably not, but again, looks good. It's, you can tell in terms of quality of build, it's got a nice finish to it. Then let's move into that PXG Gen 6. And again, 
I am a fan of uh, matte finish crowns, as I've already said, with that ping product, and the same goes for this. It's um, a bit more classical in its looks and shaping than that of the uh, ping product. And again, just some lovely accents around the side, just a raised little bit in, uh, in the crown there again. Just, um, oh, it sits so nice, this one, at the ball. It's a bit of a happy medium, if you like, in terms of traditional and that sort of shallow crown. And then finally, it's Stealth 2. And, uh, well, Stealth in terms of from above, uh, we've seen it for quite a few years now, that sort of gloss finish. Again, stepped crown, different sort of gloss finish in the front. Really appealing to me, apart from, like I said, I preferred the sort of matte finish that they adopted into the previous uh, lineup or initial lineup of Stealth products. So, they all look different. Now, how do they perform? So back at that point of the video where it's over to you, let me know, first of all, if you've tried any of these four in question and uh, let me know your feedback. What are your thoughts? Do you agree, disagree? Are there any of them made their way into your bag? Or in fact, are any of them on the radar? And if you had to choose one right now, maybe let me know which one it would be. Love you to get involved in the comment section. Also, I rarely request it, but if you have enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and for the huge amount who watch this channel but don't subscribe, please consider hitting that subscribe button. It's free, it doesn't cost you a thing, but it helps me massively. Today's video is brought to you in partnership with Hot Golf, the online golf megastore, bringing you the hottest deals in golf, and of course, the clubs featured in today's video. Find the link to the Hot Golf website in the description below, and check out some incredible giveaways and offers. Well, I think that starts off from the data I collected at Hollywell Indoor Studio and uh, Trackman was recording data and like I said, I hit quite a number of shots, but here's an abbreviation of it all. And um, rather than me go through it, which could take quite some time, I'll uh, suggest you hit the pause button now and try and break that down for yourselves. And you'll notice what the differences are. I think that there was a suggestion that uh, the ping launches the ball maybe a tad higher than the other and i just want to relate that back to our on course experience later the stealth was long and probably the fastest ball speeds what we've seen but no real separators there and don't forget this is over although i hit a lot of shots sort of 10 with each that's 40 shots so that's a considerable amount when you're banging them out then in the grand scheme of things it's really only a snapshot so onto the golf course what did i find well like I said, quite a number of shots hit from a number of different uh, tee locations and also off the fairway. The big thing for me was this. The ping club launches the ball higher than the others. That is an absolute given, 100%. In my opinion, the fastest in terms of ball speed was probably the stealth then it becomes about sound and feel and they again are so so different i cannot tell you um, the ping is harsh the uh, pxg is not too dissimilar in still that harder sound hugely improved 
on any previous iterations, but still a harder sound than what you're gonna get from the opposite end of the spectrum, which is the Callaway, which they've got a sort of almost soft feel to their fairway woods this year and to their driver lineup in my opinion so that's incredibly different and then somewhere in the middle of the two is stealth 2 which has that in my opinion perhaps the happy medium soft and yet at the same time explosive off the club face so uh, yeah very very different and as i said these are the kind of things that you need to take note of when you are wanting to buy these things because I know everybody says things are about performance. Yes, they are, but modern day golf clubs are not too dissimilar in terms of performance from one to the other. So then you've got to find out what are the bits that uh, you like better than the other to persuade you to part with a huge investment in these type of things. But once you've got that decision right, I really do believe that you've got a real good golf club in your hands, whichever one of those four you pick. Do you know what, I think that's me done before the rain comes down here at Hollywell and uh, it starts to turn a little bit. We'll end it there. My finished message, ultimate message is that a seven wood is a no brainer, which is what I said in the intro. Real good golf club for average golfers to have in a bag. Like I've said, plenty of flexibility, plenty of forgiveness. Do all the things that we, uh, we struggle with at that long end of the bag and whichever one of these four you choose, then uh, I'm sure you've not made a bad decision. Right. As ever, thank you for watching. I'm going to get myself in and uh, I'll see you all tomorrow night.